This weekend, millions of Brazilians will go to the polls to vote in the final round of the presidential election, which pits right-wing incumbent Jair Bolsonaro against former two-time president Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva. That election could have huge consequences for the Amazon rainforest and for the indigenous people who live there. NewsHour special correspondent Jane Ferguson traveled into the Amazon for this story, produced in partnership with the Pulitzer Center. It's an indigenous version of the Olympics in the Amazon, complete with opening ceremony. Here, every four years, 13 different indigenous communities gather as young people compete at age-old traditions, running races, bow and arrow, swimming, tug of war. Above all, these youth games are an effort to keep their cultures alive at a time when those cultures are under fierce attack, says the local community leader, Abro Atman. Our culture is being assassinated by white culture. The games really come to the rescue, so it's of the utmost importance, because the younger generation begin to understand themselves. They see all these people here together. It serves as a kind of appreciation for our culture. We were invited to witness the event and traveled to a tip of land where the Tapajos and Amazon rivers nearly meet, in an indigenous community known as Villa Franca. Communities like this are fighting to stay on their land. We are at war with the Brazilian government. Oracelia Arapion has been struggling for the rights of her community for years, and never as hard, she says, as during the years since President Jair Bolsonaro took office in 2019. When Bolsonaro was campaigning in the last elections, he already said he would not preserve even a centimeter, not even a millimeter of indigenous land, of our territories that were already being threatened. Territory designated for indigenous communities is meant to be protected from industries, such as mining, which is highly pollutive, or forest clearing to grow crops like soy or graze cattle. Right-wing populist president Jair Bolsonaro counts those agribusinesses as his loyalists. To get elected, he campaigned to develop untouched land in the Amazon, and he continues to do so. One of his first acts as president was taking the federal bodies in charge of indigenous rights and forest conservation and moving them from the Justice Ministry to the Agriculture Ministry. We don't sell our land because it is like our mother. Our territory is our body. And we don't sell our body, we don't sell our mother. We wouldn't sell it because it is sacred. And we start suffering pressures of invasion, pressure from mining, from agribusiness, which has expanded a lot, pressure from logging companies, which are deforesting our territories. And we have been resisting. As Bolsonaro faces former president Luis Inácio Lula da Silva, known widely as Lula, in a runoff for re-election, the Amazon rainforest and its people have become part of a wider political battle. Development versus conservation, job creation versus indigenous rights. Humanities professor Felipe Milanese says this is all part of a political playbook with messaging by Bolsonaro that stokes fears like... So we, we don't have money today. The economy in Brazil is broke because of international support to indigenous people. And Bolsonaro appeals to that, to let's say middle class. That's why you don't have job because you don't have the economy running because indigenous people doesn't allow us to extract the, 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 the reach of the nation. In June, British journalist Dom Phillips and indigenous conservation activist Bruno Pereira were murdered in the Amazon while investigating illegal fishing. President Bolsonaro's response was unsympathetic. Two people on a boat in a completely wild region is an adventure that is not recommended to do. Anything can happen. It could be an accident. It could be that they were executed. Environmentalists in Brazil, many of them indigenous, have seen an uptick in brutal murders in recent years. Activists blame the government for, at best, not cracking down on the violence and, at worst, condoning it. There's a war against the environment and there's a war against indigenous people. It's public-private private partnership because the state supports the killing. Or at least the, the Brazilian state allows the killing to be made or it's uh, very often, it's a policeman that's it's, it's doing the killing. 
as, as, a, as a freelance job, for example. Further down the Tapajos River, we meet with Alessandra Munduruku, who continues to fight agribusinesses encroaching on her people's land. She showed us what her community is up against, growing industrial development. On the Tapajos, Itaituba port is a hub for much of the soy grown upriver in areas cleared deeper in the forest. That soy passes through here en route to such faraway states as Mato Grosso and Bahia. That's a new port there? Yes, yeah, another port. So they're just expanding all the way down here? It is a governmental project. And who gets in the way a lot, who disturbs. They say these indigenous have to move. They have to be put somewhere. They are not to be here. And there is no space for us. Munduraku doesn't feel safe to stay for more than a short time. She is known here and abroad for her indigenous activism. So we were just filming here outside the port and some of the men standing on the port on the industrial side started filming us, filming them and making calls. So we're gonna move a little bit further up the river. All along the river's banks, signs of development as the port grows. It is a logistics hub to transport grains out of the areas already cleared inside the rainforest. Even the mayor seems to be doing well in the current circumstances. This is his yacht. Since Bolsonaro came to power, illegal mining, logging and development has boomed inside the Amazon under a culture of impunity and looking the other way. A gente viu. We saw companies trying to enter indigenous lands. We saw mining going further inside the territory. We started to see very strong fires, land grabbing in the territory and threats. We started seeing our river Tapajos dirtier and dirtier. Bolsonaro has defended his policies, arguing in the past that indigenous people have a right to prosper also from the development of the Amazon. Unfortunately, some people both inside and outside Brazil, supported by NGOs, have stubbornly insisted on treating and keeping our Indians as if they are real cavemen. The indigenous people do not want to be poor, large landholders sitting on rich lands, especially sitting on the world's richest lands. With so much money at stake, some members of the community have cooperated with developers, selling land and working within the mining and agricultural businesses. Unfortunately, among our people, not only our people, but in other peoples in general, there is always a rotten apple. There is always someone who wants things only for themselves. Some who live in the city thought they could speak for our people in general, but the children need to speak, the women, the chiefs, the warriors. Earlier this month, two indigenous women won election to Congress, Sonia Guajajera in Sao Paulo State and Celia Chakriaba in Minas, Jerez. But Bolsonaro's party won the highest number of congressional seats. Their work ahead will be difficult. These two women, they've always been from the movement. They have always been women who listen to us. Suddenly these women are there sitting with a lot of people who are against us. It will be a challenge for them, but we will be here to always give them strength. She will need plenty of strength herself. Munduraku doesn't advertise her movements and tends to travel last minute, but there's no denying she is completely exposed out here. These are risks she has made peace with. I will continue this life. I will continue to defend my territory, my people, my children, sacred places. I will not stop now, even if they kill me. And I am not scared. I always continue fighting and protecting. You have two sons, so you've got children. You know, when you picture their future, what do you see? What do you hope for? I always say, my sons, if today I am in this fight, if today there are these attacks, it is because I am defending what is best for you. Your future is the territory. Your future is the river. Your future is the forest. Brazil's immediate political future will be decided on October 30th, when millions vote for their next president. That moment in political history and the impact it has will reach deep into the Amazon, along its waterways and through its forests, to the people fighting for both its future and theirs. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jane Ferguson in Itaituba, Brazil.